And I mean, I've got to ask you, James, what was it like playing in that game? It was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, firstly, it was lovely to be back, you know, honestly, <laughs> you just, when you're injured and you're starved of doing what you love, it's, that just reminded me why I love football so much, just yeah. being out there tonight. But um, yeah, first half was a little bit stop-start, wasn't it? Kind of probably the game Brentford wanted, a lot of stoppages, set pieces, kind of how they, how they are successful. And then the second half, we were, I just think we had too much from and, and we were cleaning with the ball, created a lot of chances, scored some goals and it's never, it's never simple and plain sailing here. It's, <laughs> there's a lot of goals at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but yeah. Um, luckily, yeah, three points, so happy. And you say that time out that you had, how do you manage that period? I mean, injuries are something that comes with football. How, is mm. it, how have you managed that time mentally for yourself? I the haven't, I haven't the really. The gaffer said you were a nightmare yeah, yeah. being injured. He joined us before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, I'm a bit of a moaner. My missus would probably say I'm a moaner at the best of times. So when I'm injured, it's, uh, it's tough, you know. And I always say there's a, there's a design fault at Spurs. Like the, <laughs> the physio room, the beds all face the, the pictures with big glass windows. Nothing so you, worse is there than that. You're getting your treatments and stuff, and you're just watching the lads train every single day, you know. Yeah, it's, uh... it's tough, but oh, I'm through it now. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling yeah. strong. But you've got to try and take the positives, you know, of being injured. Like, I got to work on some strength stuff in other areas where like, I couldn't my ankle. Um, but I'm feeling good and really happy to be yeah. back. And good to see you being impactful as well. I've got to ask you, what did you say to Neil Mopé? What was going on in that conversation? Mm. A little bit of needle between you, because they were really, you no, know, I see, yeah, I see going him. at you, weren't they, I with the celebrations? That, yeah, he, it's too he, early for that for him, wasn't it? There was too much time left yeah. in the game, wasn't it? <laughs> you went to the Ali Pali this year. I've seen more darts today than <laughs> I have. <been. laughs> I know. Uh, he tell, put, yeah. what, what was happening here, James? Tell us. I just said to him, he, he probably hasn't scored enough goals of his own over the last few years to have his own celebration, so he probably had to copy mine. So, um, yeah, a short story. It ended well for us, though. Ended well, and it just shows, doesn't it? You just don't go in too early, do you? But um, what about for Spurs to be in the top four? I mean, this is, you know, the, when you were got injured, or just before you got injured, you know, you're top of the table fighting for that place as well, and the team was all together before the injuries started to hit. Now you're sort of pushing back mm -hmm. to be in that position, and you've come back in, and other players are coming back in you're waiting for the the uh, ones away on international duty to return as well yeah. how positive do you feel now about the second half of the campaign yeah, i feel really positive you know we've we've had a very um stop starty type year kind of thing with injuries and suspensions to our 11 you know we started really well and we kind of we had the same we, we had the same 11 for probably like 10 11 games mm. in a row which is very rare in the premier league and every team picks up their own injuries and stuff but kind of yeah derailed us a little bit that that chelsea game was a uh, it was a crazy game here where we picked up a couple of injuries and suspensions and stuff. Um, but people keep asking, that's the main question I get asked, is what, what's, the, what's the aim for Tottenham this year and stuff? And I don't think the gaffer wants to put a, a limit on it. it. Like, There's no ceiling. Why can't something special happen, you know? Um, what I'm not would constitute something special? Oh, anything, though. You know, like, we're, we're, I don't know what, that puts us on maybe like 43 points or something mm, like that. 43 now, yeah. So we're like, I think we're three points behind the, the two above us, second yeah, place. Yeah, so. Second and Let's third, not put yeah. a ceiling on it, you know. Let's just keep game by game. I think we've got what 16, 17 games left, something like that. And I don't, I don't we can go on a big run, you know. And you can't put limits on it because then nothing special can ever happen. If you don't believe something special can happen, then nothing can ever happen. And as long as you can look at yourself as a team after after 38 games and say you gave everything, then and we'll see where we are at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're a player, obviously, wants to be free, you know, wants to get on the ball and, and create things. Like, How much licence does the manager, because it, it looks like you've just got so much freedom to go and play. Yeah, well, yeah, freedom freedom individually, but all within a structure. You know, it, The good thing and why I love playing for this manager so much is he gives you freedom, but it's all interchanging. So you can never just... I can't just go and run and take it off the right back. It's not freedom like that. It's yeah. kind of like the best way to describe it. It's freedom within a structure. So you'll see... The fullbacks pop up in like number 10 area. You see Destiny today, some of the yeah. positions he takes up. But if he's ever up there like that, you'll probably see me a little bit deeper in the kind of like half space. I saw you actually having a conversation with him in the second half. He popped in there. It was like mm. you were saying, you know, I thought sometimes today he maybe got in there a little bit early. That's where mm. the first goal came from. Second half, it looked like when he had space to break into, he's yeah. almost unplayable, isn't he? Yeah, he's so, he's so powerful. And he's, I think he's a little bit underrated technically as well. He can receive the ball in tight areas and and he can wriggle away and he's actually quite a good dribbler. So, um, but as long as, yeah, there was times that I haven't played, I haven't, that's my first start in three months, you know, I kind of figuring out as I was going, like the little routines that we kind of picked up and like, you get like natural chemistry and connection with people on the, your side you play and mm. kind of figured that out. That's probably why it was better in the second half. Do you, might, do you know, like sometimes as a ball player, you think like you want, say, a Modric or a Skulls or you to like have space to work in. Sometimes it feels like more bodies come in there. Does that sometimes make it a little bit harder for you or is it more people to link with? It, 
I, I, did, I did find that at the start because I'm obviously a player who likes playing the pockets and stuff and the manager here is insistent on getting players in the middle of the pitch. And I, a couple of times I was in pre-season and early games in the season where I'd be like, someone's actually like in my way almost, <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. But then it's just, it, it, the, the gaffer loves having the players on the inside and overloading. So sometimes you might have to go a little bit wider or it opens up the pass straight to the wing gaff because yeah. it narrows the other team. Like you see Brentford a very narrow man yeah. to man. And you can almost go straight to Timo Werner then from Mickey van der Ven and you miss out all the little tippy taffy stuff which gets you high up the pitch. So there is method behind the madness, I think. Mm, yeah. There definitely seems like there's a method behind the madness and it does sort of work, but you do like to live dangerously. <laughs> yeah, I did say that, didn't I? Um, <laughs> well, to be fair, the set... Like, the I'm set, not just you, the, the I mean, everyone. Yeah, no, the second goal for them is obviously just an individual mistake from Destiny. He, he just didn't... He said he didn't see Ivan Tony. The shirts blend in with, like, the seats and the... <laughs> I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, he took the goal really well, Ivan, to be fair, and we were hanging on at the end, but three points is three points, whether you win 4-0 yeah. or 3-2, so we'll take it, yeah. And how much are you looking forward to what's left of the season? Because this is now the focus, the Premier League, and it's yeah. just pushing and pushing as far as you can go. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, no ceiling on it. Just really happy to be back personally and, and, and contributing to the team and, and getting as far as far as we can up that league table. You won't yeah. be nagging the gaffer then because he'll just put you on the I'll leave him alone. Right, yeah, yeah. I'll leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> Great to, to see you, James, you. as always. Well done, mate. Great to see you. Take care. Thank you. Thank see you, you soon. Well done, Great to see James Madison back involved in a victory as well here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And it was a really big one. It was a London derby here. And Tottenham Hotspur are back in the top four after victory over Brentford. We'll be hoping to hear from both managers after the break. <laughs> 